Hello, this is Angelo with Parker's Permaculture. It is weird weather here in Portland today. Sunny, gorgeous blue skies, then rainy, then back to sunny again. Weird. It's May. Um, I want to actually talk today a little bit more about composting and what kinds of paper products are safe to put in our compost and our worm bins. So a while back, I did a series of videos talking about whether cardboard is safe to use in the garden. And there were some garden professors who were really stirring up a lot of fear and anxiety in online gardening groups saying it wasn't safe to compost or use plain corrugated cardboard for sheet mulching in the garden. And I talked about what the science is around that and how those claims are really unfounded and fear mongering and unhelpful. So go watch those videos if you want to learn more about that. But I found that the logical extension of that conversation that ended up happening in a number of gardening groups was, oh my gosh, if we can't use cardboard, yes, you can use cardboard. If we're, if we're being told cardboard's not safe, it is safe. What does that mean for office paper? What does that mean for white paper? Okay. So let's, let's talk about it. Is it safe to use white office paper, shredded, shredded documents in your worm bin, shredded paper? I use it in my duck house for bedding, shredded paper in your compost. Is that safe? White paper. So what's the concern with white paper products? Why would we be worried that they aren't safe to use in the garden or in our worm bin? I mean, after all, like our, our coffee filters are white paper. We're putting hot liquids through them that we drink, right? Why can't we use them in the garden? Well, the concern here that folks were expressing in these gardening groups where they were, everybody was kind of a little bit alarmist, was that paper, white paper contains dioxins, which are kind of a persistent, the World Health Organization has designated dioxin one of its top 12 most concerning pollutants. Dioxin is a byproduct of bleaching paper, also a byproduct of the fertilizer industry. So dioxins are a big problem at paper mills where the paper is made. The water from that process of making paper, making paper is a very water intensive process. The water from that, the effluent from it often contains a lot of dioxins, which get into the rivers and really contaminate the aquatic life, right? Really pose a significant risk to the aquatic life. Dioxins also pose a health risk to us. They're associated with increased risks of cancer, with reproductive issues, um, hormonal issues. It's not, it's not a good scene. So you might think like, okay, we know that dioxin is a byproduct of bleaching paper. Therefore, we're worried that bleach paper contains unhealthy levels of dioxin. I could see how you would make that logical step, step, step. This is why we have science to prove whether that hypothesis is true. And it actually is not. It's not supported by the data. So you don't need to worry. I'll say that right off the bat. You don't need to worry. So, so this was the blog referenced, and I will link to it down below, that folks were using to say, I'm worried about dioxins in shredded office paper in my compost. And this is why it's so important to go back to the primary source. This article did not list that one science-based source, and I could not find a paper to back up this claim. Just because someone vaguely references a scientific paper, it doesn't mean that paper exists or that it actually says the thing they are asserting. You need to go read the study. So back in 1990, the EPA actually came out and said, you know, we have sufficient data to show that white paper products do not can contain concerning levels of dioxin. It is a negligible risk and it's totally safe to use white paper. It's safe to compost white paper in your garden. It's safe to put it in your worm bin. So way back in 1990, the EPA already knew where the risks were around dioxins in the production of paper, and it was not in the resulting paper products themselves. It was in the manufacturing process. So in 1990, the EPA came out with a statement and this plan to better regulate dioxin production in the paper industry. The EPA's statement says, even though dioxin levels in paper products are small enough to be no cause for alarm, our intention is to reduce those levels even more. The focus of the EPA's new regulation was to reduce dioxin production at the source, paper and pulp mills. Dioxin discharge from these mills got into the waterway and was causing a significant pollution problem, not only for the water, but for the aquatic life, including fish that we eat. Because this is where 90% of our exposure to dioxins occurs from fish, shellfish, meat and dairy products that we ingest. And they accumulate it in their fatty tissues from exposure to contaminated water. The concern about dioxins is not in the paper product itself. It's in the production of the paper and the runoff and effluent discharge from that process. So the EPA has said since 1990, since I was 11 years old, that it's totally fine 
And yes, the EPA since then has worked to restrict and reduce the amount of dioxin produced in the paper making process and the amount of dioxin as a chemical pollutant at the production site. But the paper itself, fine to compost. And the New Zealand government has also adopted, based on the same literature, the same stance. Totally fine. Don't worry about it. And there's also studies way back to the late 80s where they tested coffee filters that I talked about in the beginning, right? Bleached coffee filters. Should we be worried that we're running hot liquid that we are then ingesting through this bleached paper? Nope. It's fine. Minimal, negligible amounts of dioxin not statistically significant in any way, shape, or form, not a worry. However, if you don't want to contribute to the pollution at the manufacturing stage, way back here, where we were getting runoff into the estuaries and waterways, you can buy unbleached coffee filters, or you can buy reusable ones. My parents loved using reusable coffee filters. Okay, they're like a metal mesh, and you just wash them out. So despite folks posting in gardening groups freaking out every time someone says they use shredded office paper in their worm bin or their compost, the data says that we don't actually have to worry. So always go back to the literature and I will link to those studies and some of the articles and information down below. Please be aware that some of them are not accessible unless you have access to an academic search engine. Unfortunately, they're going to be behind a paywall. The EPA has also been regulating the levels of dioxin in paper products that come in contact with food since 1990. I think it's super important that we understand where the real risks of dioxin exposure are to people and the environment, and it is not from composting shredded office paper. I'll link below to all of this info from the EPA, but the real risks from dioxin are from industrial polluters. Much like any corporate systemic level pollution problem, it can be really trendy and easy in our society to blame individuals when the bulk of the pollution, the vast majority of it, is from industrial sources. If you're worried about exposing yourself to dioxins, two big things you can do. Don't smoke and don't burn garbage in your backyard. On a systemic level, control dioxin exposure by voting for elected officials who believe in robust regulation of industrial polluters. Secondary note here, and I can get into this more at a later time. Folks off, often worry about office paper because of the ink used on it. And in the old days, we had a lot more heavy metals and a lot more concerning petroleum-based inks. Inks nowadays are typically soy-based. And if you're dealing with regular office documents, that ink is not a safety concern and it's fine to put in your compost and in your worm bin. So I hope that helped clear that up and alleviates any worries that you may have. Go to the research, go to the data. Don't take my word for it on things. Don't take the word of some blogger who has a big incentive to post clickbait and fear mongering nonsense that is not supported by the data. Not only do we want to look at what is being talked about in terms of the science and the popular media, but we actually want to go back and read the study itself whenever possible because studies are often misrepresented in the popular media, media and by bloggers and by academics even. You want to look at the data and see what it tells you. And what we know here and have known for decades is that shredded office paper is safe to use in your garden and in your worm bin, and you don't need to worry about the dioxin risk. We also know that dioxin is a significant health concern and that we need to address it and have strong environmental protections to address it at the manufacturing site and deal with runoff from paper production that not only harms wildlife, harms our precious water sources, but literally like causes cancer and reproductive problems for us as well. So thanks for watching today. Please let me know if you have any other questions or any of these kind of like, oh, I heard this on the internet and I'm worried that this thing is not safe to do in my garden. I'm happy to nerd out on the science and read through the journal articles if you don't want to do that. So let me know if you want to talk about those topics, what they feel free to ask your questions. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. That is a great way that you can support this channel without ever having to give me a penny. If you want to give me some pennies, there is a thanks button. That is a really easy way that you can chuck a couple of bucks at me. If you if you want to, I would be super grateful. Also, don't forget to follow me on TikTok. I am right on the cusp of being monetized over there, which is fabulous in less than two weeks. Um, but I do talk a little bit more... It's a little bit sassier and I talk a lot more about the permaculture ethic of people care. I throw in a little bit of gardening here and there, but a lot about people care concepts. So um, follow me over there if you're up for that, but please click like and subscribe here and please be sure to share with folks. Thanks.